Hello, how are we going today? Uh, my name is Julian Wilton. I made a game called The Adventure Pals, like a little platformer game about a small boy and the crazy adventures he went on. And I'm the creative director at a game studio called Massive Monster. Um, so welcome, welcome. Uh, this is my first time doing the video, so welcome. This is my little office. We've got a Massive Monster little neon sign over there. Um, here, here is my TV, it's, it's all happening over here. Um, so, what are we up to today, you know? I thought today might be a good opportunity, let's look into shaders. Um, I recently got into shaders and, you know, they look pretty like, oh, well, this is really complicated, and yeah, they are. But luckily there's some tools that make it really easy, and they're friggin' sweet once you get it going. So, I think, yeah, let's jump in today and see how we go. Alright, here we are. Welcome to the Artist Guide to Shaders. Um, I'm actually just in Photoshop right now because, you know what, I need to teach you guys what an actual shader is. And it's interesting I'm using Photoshop because actually a lot of people will initially design their shaders in Photoshop, you know? Um, so, I'll actually touch on that a little bit more. Uh, but firstly, I'll say, what is a shader? What the hell is a shader? Um, so basically what a shader is, it's just basically a little packet of like instructions, here it is, whoa, that feed into your computer and tell it how to render something. Um, now, shaders, you know, it's not programming. Well, it is kind of programming, but there's like kind of less logic to it. You're basically just telling a computer how to do something. Um, so... Just to start, I'll kind of break down what a shader is. So here it is here, and it's kind of made up, the way in Unity it's, it's structured like this. So you have, number one, you have the frag, the fragment shader, fragment, you know, fragment. But what does that mean? What does a fragment mean? You know, I don't like it, let's get rid of it. You know, see you later. I just, you know, an easy way to maybe refer to it is, like the kind of the pixels, um, the pixels that you're going to render. Now, obviously, I'm doing a 2D game, so that makes a lot more sense, but if you're doing a 3D game, you know, it's quite different. Um, so, yeah, that's the pixels. And the other thing we have is, number two, the vert, the vertices. I was called vert. Now, what is a vert? It's basically the positions of a mesh. Um, so basically through the shader you can reposition the vertices um, So here's a little example uh, a sprite shader in unity is made up of a quad Here's a little I don't know. Here's a little sun or something Inside so how would that look in unity as a mesh is this and here are the vertices Boom, it's got four vertices and basically through unity and through the shader, you can reposition these. So you can make them go back and forth or whatever you like. So that's, you know, that's kind of, that's quite fun. Uh, you can also, you know, rotate them and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that's basically what a verse is. And the pixels, I can break down a little bit more. Or the fragment, you know, let's just get rid of that. Um, the fragment can be, is made up of basically... RGBA values, so I'll write that down, R, G, B, A, and, you know, let's just draw a picture to kind of get that going a bit. So, you see here in Photoshop, you have R, G, B, so it's actually the exact same thing. So when you draw something, it gets those channels and gets those values and gets fed into the individual things. So if I draw here, it's going to go into the R, G, and B channel based on what these values are. So you can see it here. 252, 51, and 80. The A is just the alpha. So in this example, you know, if this is your, this is your sprite, and I've got something here, then all this, all this empty space here, that's the alpha value. But, you know, it also works when you have transparency and stuff like that. So, you know, this is our little, this is our sprite here, you know, actually it's pretty ugly, let's, you know, let's make it look a bit cooler. So here's a little dude in a cowboy hat, you know, he's looking cool. Look at that, boom. So we've got his RGBA values, 
And what we also have, and what he's also made up of, is a UV. So we've got UV. And that goes into the RGBA values. And what the UV is, is basically the coordinates of the pixels, okay? So that actually kind of works a bit similar to versus. We can also like manipula manipulate the UV to kind of change the position of the pixels within the frag shader. So, you know, and what does U UV mean? You know, I hear you asking, you're like, Julian, what is a UV? I don't know, it's so confusing. Um, you know, I just like cross it out again, and we can just say X and Y. I don't know which is which, I always forget which, which way is which. But if you manipulate the U data in the UV, you're gonna go X and uh, the, the same thing for a V. I mean, I could be wrong, it might be the other way around. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the shader. So we've got, we've got the frag pass here, and we've got the vert pass over, you know, over here. Um, so, you know, a basic example might be, we want a shader that we take our image here and we were happy with the image, but maybe we want to move it a bit to the left or something. So we could just feed into the UV and say, you know, um, UV and then we'll create like another variable that's a vector two and we'll just say two, zero, for example. And then we get these two and we just plus them together and then we feed it into that. And what that'll do is it'll reposition this image by two pixels. You know, nice and simple. So, boom, that's it. So let's, you know what, I think let's, let's hop into Unity and get this going. All right, welcome to Unity. Oh shit, boy. Um, so here's a little devil guy. This is actually from a kind of character we created for our new game, but it kind of got scrapped. So, you know, he gets to be used here, I think. Uh, it's only fair. Um, so when you first don't open up Unity, um, you know, you'll get all this random crap, you know, this little scene they set up that's meant to look really cool. Um, you know, it does look pretty cool, but yeah, we can just turn that off. We don't need it, but go away. Uh, and what we'll do is basically get a sprite you want and bring it in. That's your boy. Now, you want to make sure that you've got the universal render pipeline as well. Make sure it's downloaded from the package manager. And kind of what that comes with is shader graph. Now, I don't usually use shader graph. Um, I've been using Amplify Shader Editor recently, but you know, it doesn't really matter what you use um, in any of the visual uh, scripting things for shaders. They're all kind of similar and with similar principles. Um, but yeah. Let's jump into it. Um, so yeah, the first thing you want to do is I've just made a new folder called new shader and I'm going to go create shader and I'm going to do a 2D unlit graph. Boom. Um, and you know, just call it something cool. Cool shader. It's a pretty good name. And we can open shader editor. Cool. So yeah, this is what you're, you're welcomed with. You know, it's not very welcoming, is it? You're like, what the hell's going on here? Oh my god, what have I done? Hold up. Everyone, sorry about this. Um, there we go. All good, all good. So, you've got this. I don't know what this does. It's some weird. Um, right, so let's get into it. So, what we have here is we have the vertex position, vertex normal, vertex chan tangent, and the color. So this is the basics of the shader. Kind of what I've just told you, but in this in shader graph in this example, they have a few additional passes such as the vertex normal and vertex tangent. We don't really need those. The vertex position is what I was telling you about the vert um, pass and the color is basically the frag the frag pass. Uh, now in, sh in uh, shader graph here, we also have this bit up the top. Uh, basically this kind of holds your properties, kind of your variables. Um, so anything you kind of want to manipulate through the material, you'll keep up here and kind of anything you want to change the variables on. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the ver ver first thing I'll get into is maybe the vertex position, because that's nice and easy. Um, so just to show you an example of how that works, you know, maybe what we'll do is we'll create an offset for it. So to do that, we can kind of create a node and we will get the position of the object. So that's currently doing that at the moment through this object space. 
and we can just feed that into there. And then that'll, you know, it'll be exactly the same. But what we want to do is if we go add, boom, then we can change that. So if we go add that into there, we can um, create uh, a variable up here called a vector three, which is basically just three float values. So we'll call this offset or maybe vertex offset. And we'll drag it in, boom, there we go. And we can put that into the add. Now, currently that's zero, 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 but um, we'll just we'll just leave that for now, that's fine. And we'll feed it into there. So boom, this is our very first shader and we'll save it. We'll go back to our scene and we're gonna right click on it and we'll just go new material, create material. Cool, and then we can put it on here. Boom. All right, look at that, isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that great? Um, as you can see, it's actually oh, it's actually wrong right now. I think I've I should have done it from the object position, obviously. Um, so there we go. That's back to normal. Uh, and now you can see if we play with these variables, it actually moves the object. Like, hey, that's pretty cool. Hey, um, and you might be thinking, what the hell's going on with this fella? He looks freaking weird now. What what's happened? Um, well, if you look in the shader, you can kind of see like. The only thing going into the frag shaming right now is this little color, which is, you know, that's not too good. So let's let's change that up. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the texture. And what you want to call this main text. You know, this is a little secret. You got to do it. You got to do it. This is how you tell Unity to use the sprite renderer texture. It's text texture, texture. Um just call it main text exactly like that or it won't work okay um once you've had that bring it in you know now this is a texture that's great but you know you can't do anything with it well why isn't it working um because the texture is just you know that's just an object so we actually need to convert the texture into the rgba channels so what we'll do is we'll get a texture sampler boom and what we'll do is we'll just put the texture in the sample texture thing and then there you go, boom. And then that should work. Hey, looky, there he is, cool. Now we can offset him, whoa, crazy. What a cool shader. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. And we also have the UV as I was talking about. So in the previous uh, example, if you recall, I said we could get the UV and offset it a bit. So what that would look like is if I went UV which is the UV coordinates. You have different channels. This is for when you have like multiple UVs. Don't worry about this for now. You know, we, we, we can just start with this. And what we do is we input it into the UV. You can see how this only takes two values. So that's why it says UV2 and it starts with the four. And basically we can offset this again. So if we just do the exact same thing, we grab it and we add, and then we can create a vector two and call this UV offset plug it in, put it in, and then boom. Now we have a UV offset. So let's save that. Um, so you can see in the UV offset, it actually gets marked by the texture. So we actually can't, you know, we're limited here to the constraints that of the texture image. So that's why the vertex is useful because it won't mask it. Okay, so you gotta be, you know, keep that in mind, keep that in mind. Cool. So what else? What else do we want to do to this guy? So currently we can use the the sprite renderer color. Now the reason we can do that is because we're using the sprite template from uh, Shader Graph, and what the tint basically does is it adds color to the vertexes. So we've got the vertex colors or the vertices colors. I don't know what you call it. One or the other. And basically the template is already multiplying the the texture, the RGBA values by the vertex colors. All right, so that's probably a bit confusing, but you can see here if we do the exact same thing, we went vertex color and we multiplied it by the texture. That is what that's what's happening right now. So it won't it won't really do anything because it's already doing it. You know, not very exciting. But maybe a better thing we could do is we could change all of the, his colors to one color. 
um, and maybe if we have a little slider so we can kind of change between it so maybe when he gets hit by something he could like change color so yeah let's get into that you know we don't need you go away go away go away go away go away um, you know vertex position I don't know we don't need that go away um, so here we are go away um, so feed that back in so what we're gonna do is we basically we'll start with a color we got to get it from up here if we want to manipulate it um, and we'll call this fill color and I'm, I, you know, maybe a nice red for this guy. So what, how are we going to do the fill? Basically, we want to change all of his color values except for the alpha channel. So what we'll do is we got it here and then we kind of need to split this four. See how it's four variables? We need to split that into so they're separate. So we can just go split. Boom. And then we can put them back together with combine. Now, a lot of making shaders is this. Just splitting stuff up, putting it back together. So grab these. Get the alpha channel from the initial texture. Feed it into it so that it's masked properly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put that in there. So that'll change all the colors. He's all red now. That's sick. But, you know, maybe you want a slider to change it, as I was saying. So what we'll do is we'll create a lerp. A lerp is basically you're just transitioning between two values based on a value. So what we'll do, we'll chuck the fill in here and we'll chuck the initial value here and we'll output it. So now that we can lerp between them, what we want to do is create a value to define that lerp. So we'll just say lerp amount or maybe like fill lerp amount, you know, call it whatever you want. I don't care. Um, chuck it over here and we're going to fill, we're going to put that in. Okay. That's the lerp. Now the lerp value needs to be between zero and one because that's the max value can only be one. So what we want to do here is set it to a slider, set the max to one. Okay. I mean, we can, I'll show you what it looks like without that. Um, so we've got it here. Now we can do it. Whoop. Oh yeah, look at that. That's sick. Hell yeah. So yeah, you know, maybe when he gets hit, he's like, pow, pow, pow. but yeah, as I was saying, so like, you know, if we, the fill amount wasn't one, you can actually, in shaders, you know, you can go beyond the max values and things and make things start looking quite weird. So if I just save that, we can, you know, make him go, whoa, if we go minus values, you know, and that's pretty cool. Maybe we want to do that. I don't know. And that's basically kind of taking all the red out of it because it's minusing the red value. And this is increasing the red value. But here, the max value can only be one. Okay, you see. Um, but what we can also do on the color is we can make it HDR. Now, HDR is quite interesting because we can basically increase the red value you know, we can change that to an intensity of one. So you see now the R value instead of one is two. So that's actually quite interesting. It means like on a HD device, you can see that it's like a lot more red and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, basically, you know what? Maybe that wraps it up for this tutorial. You know, maybe that's all we got. You know, if if you have, you know, a shader you want, let me know and we can make it together. It'll be romantic. I'll hold your hand. It'll be great. All right. So yeah, let's do it. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you know, you know what to do. You gotta press the buttons. Okay. Tell your tell your friends. Um, you know, get on your friends YouTube and subscribe. Okay. And then they'll they'll think you're cool. Okay. All right. Thanks. Bye.